Okay, our last set of redox reactions or oxidation reduction reactions have to do with um, permanganate. Um, so we have a test tube here just, just to see the color of potassium permanganate. It has a very bright purple color. Uh, and so starting with uh, the bottom of page 59, um, potassium permanganate, which is KMnO4, that purple stuff in our test tube, is an excellent, excellent oxidizing agent in acidic medium. Um, and then we're going to decide once we've added, um, we're going to add sodium oxalate, sulfuric acid, and then we're going to add the potassium permanganate to see if the permanganate is reduced to the manganese 2 plus ion. Um, so here, um, to help us decide whether things are reduced or oxidized um, in this, this permanganate ion, is we're going to look at the colors that we see, and then we can also use that table on page 58. Um, so it tells us that there are several different colors for any of these manganese um, oxyanions. Um, so the manganese oxyanion we're starting with is um, the permanganate, MnO4 minus. Um, so in my test tube, this was just, so you can see the color. Um, we're not going to use that one. We're going to add about one milliliter of sodium oxalate. So I have my dropper bottle of sodium oxalate. Okay, so I've added my sodium oxalate. Now come the 10 drops of sulfuric acid. Okay, so in acidic medium, our, which is our sulfuric acid, um, the potassium permanganate should be reduced um, to the manganese 2 ion, um, plus 2 ion, which has a light pink color. So now, after we added our acid, we're going to add one drop of potassium permanganate. Okay, so we're just going to let this react a little bit more. I'm not going to shake it this whole time. Um, we're going to move on to the next reaction. We'll come back and look at um, if this does turn light pink. So my potassium permanganate is kind of old, um, and that's why it's not light pink. It's kind of brown. So it went through a phase where it was kind of pink, um, but potassium permanganate is a little old, so it's a more of a light brown color. But it's definitely changed. So you can say in your report sheet that the permanganate has been reduced to MN, MN2+, manganese 2 plus. Uh, so the next reaction with this permanganate is we are going to add hydrogen, uh, not sodium hydrogen uh, sulfite, that's also called sodium bisulfite, and then we're going to see what happens in a basic solution. So we're going to add sodium hydrogen sulfite, and we're also going to add ten, uh, a couple of drops of sodium hydroxide, which is a base, and then we'll add the potassium permanganate and see what kind of manganese oxyanions form here. that it did not turn pink this time, it has turned green, okay? Um, so make sure that you record your observations. Let me see if I can get, I think that green color is a little hard to see. Okay, so it, it turned a green solution. Um, so you can identify what uh, manganese oxyanion uh, manganese oxyanion is formed um, in that basic solution. Okay, so that's for number 17. And now we want to add dropwise um, KMnO4 and observe the effect of each drop. Okay, so we're going to add a total of 10. Between each drop, we're going to shake it up a little bit and see what happens to the color. Okay, there's one drop.
see that it's getting darker in color as we've added three drops. It's about to be four drops. So as we continue to add drops of the potassium permanganate, um, think about what's gonna happen if we add like 15 drops. Are we gonna continue to still have the um, sodium we're going to continue to still have the sodium hydrogen sulfite and the basic solution in there or is all of that going to be reacted eventually and then you might just have a buildup of potassium permanganate if you have just a buildup of potassium permanganate what color would you expect to see drops. You can see that solution is a lot darker than we started with. Um, it's even sodium hydrogen sulfite is going to run out and then we'll just have a buildup of potassium permanganate. Um, so you would expect that you probably eventually if you kept adding it and adding it, um, it would start kind of turning purple again because you would have more um, permanganate in that Okay, the next type of reactions that you're going to look at are metathesis reactions. So we're going to look at um, several different metathesis reactions. So this is for part C. Um, the first one is going to be sodium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid. So So your general form for metathesis reactions is AX plus BY yields AY plus BX. You can also think of this as a double exchange reaction, double displacement, double replacement reaction. Um, this particular reaction um, is an exception to that AX plus BY um, because we're, you would think that you would make sodium, uh, hydrogen carbonate or carbonic acid, but that doesn't exist in solution. So hopefully when we do this reaction, we're gonna see bubbling um, because a gas is forming. So in this case, we have AX is the sodium carbonate, BY is the hydrochloric acid. Our AY would be carbonic acid, but that decomposes to water and carbon, uh, carbon dioxide. It decomposes to water and carbon dioxide. So hopefully we see bubbles when I add this acid. So you can definitely see that we're making bubbles. It's popping up in that test tube. Add a little more and then I'll hold it up. So there's a lot of bubbling going on there. So that is the carbon, uh, carbon dioxide being formed. Okay, and then our, our reaction also makes water and the BX, in this case, the other part of our AY plus, A -Y plus BX um, is sodium chloride. Okay, sodium chloride is in solution. Um, so if all of this sodium carbonate reacted, which it probably won't since we didn't add a ton of acid, um, you would see a clear solution, which would just be water and our sodium chloride um, solution. So there's no solid being formed in this reaction. Any solid that you may see in the bottom of our test tube um, is just unreacted reactant. Okay, the next metathesis reaction that we're going to look at is um, skipping down to uh, number 33 where we have lead 2 nitrate, PBNO32, and, and hydrochloric acid. It did, it did fall down to that, um, into that um, pretty well. So you can see all of that solid there. It's kind of sinking to the bottom. If we let that sit there for a minute, it will sink to the bottom. Um, so you want to think about what are your reactants that you started with. We have
um, lead to nitrate plus hydrochloric acid. Um, those are AX plus BY. You want to predict what the AY plus BX is. Okay. Um, so this is lead to nitrate plus hydrochloric acid. It did form a precipitant, a white precipitant, so that you can identify it. The precipitants on that list, um, on that table on page 58, are going to be called water insoluble solids. Our next metathesis reaction is going to be barium chloride, BaCl2, plus um, potassium chromate. Potassium chromate is K2CrO4. Um, so we have moved on to number 36, 37, and 38. You're going to record your observations, identify what the precipitant is, and then finish that metathesis reaction. So here we add. So again, if a precipitant forms, it's going to look cloudy. It may not sink all the way to the bottom immediately. The other one did quite nicely, but this one is not. It's kind of a milky yellow solution. Um, so you want to identify what is your precipitant. Um, so you can predict that precipitant using that formula AX plus BY yields AY plus BX. Um, or you can look for um, a precipitant that matches on page 58. Our last set of metathesis reactions um, is going to be dealing with uh, barium chloride again. So I'm going to start with the barium chloride in my test tube. And this time we're going to add ammonium carbonate. Um, so we have barium chloride BaCl2 plus ammonium carbonate, which is NH42CO3. Um, here we have moved on to 39 and 40. So we're gonna identify what the precipitant is and number, and number 39. And then you're gonna write the reaction between barium chloride and ammonium carbonate um, on your report sheet for number 30. So here we're gonna add that Ammonium carbonate. And so our solution has got is is uh, cloudy. We have that white solid that forms. So you want to make sure to identify that. Remembering that in this case we started with barium chloride and ammonium um, carbonate. And we're gonna wait a few minutes and let this settle. Then we're gonna add hydrochloric acid. So you want to be able to identify what this solid is, and then we're going to react that with the hydrochloric acid for um, the report sheet for number 41 through 43. We have waited a little while for this reaction between barium chloride and ammonium carbonate to happen. Um, the book asks you to decant and let it settle, um, pour it off, and then add some water, um, but we're not going to do that. That would take too long. It is not settling um, very quickly. Okay. But we will be able to see what happens in this reaction when we now add what it calls for the hydrochloric acid. Okay, so here we have a solid that is barium carbonate. That solid is barium carbonate, that white solid in our test tube. And now we're reacting the barium carbonate with hydrochloric acid, HCl. So here our, our reactants are BaCO3 plus HCl see what happens here. Okay, let me add the HCO. Hopefully you saw that reaction happen. Um, we had a lot of gas form. So you need to think about what that gas was. 
Okay, so we have barium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid. And it's forming gas vigorously. So I'm going to have to clean this mess up. Okay, so the barium carbonate reacts with the hydrochloric acid. It clearly forms a gas. So you may have that um, exception to the AX plus BY rule where you have the decomposition uh, of, uh, of carbonic acid to water and carb water and carbon dioxide. That gas was carbon dioxide. Um, how do I know? Thinking about what our reactants were. One more time, let's see if we see the bubbles. So that gas that's forming is carbon dioxide, a good deal of it. And we also made the other salt there, which is gonna be um, barium chloride. BACL2. Barium chloride is a clear solution. We already looked at that. Um, that's what the solution is. The gas is going to be that carbon dioxide. 